Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Janice Gerbrandt, and I'm one of the hosts for the PASS virtual group for professional development. And today we have Matt Cushing, and he's going to give us a presentation about networking at your first SQL Saturday event. Um, just real quick before we get to that, I'm going to run through some PASS information. This is an exciting time for everybody. The call for speakers is now open for this year's SQL uh, PASS Summit. Uh, that's till the end of this month. And another PASS Summit opportunity is if you are interested in being a PASS Summit blogger, and I guess this puts you on the inside track, um, so we can apply before the end of April or April 25th to be considered as the PASS Summit blogger. Um, something else the PASS is doing is they're updating or working on making their virtual information a little better organized and easier to find. So I think we need to keep our eye on the YouTube channel and PASS TV uh, in the near future. And it might be easier to find the recordings and things like that that you want to watch. So uh, as you are here today for a virtual group webinar, there are lots of others coming up in the next month. Uh, here's just a sampling. We've got some DevOps, we've got some cloud, global Hebrew and DBA fundamentals. And also in just in the, another couple of weeks, we have another professional development talk coming up. Uh, it's being presented by George Walters. The topic is working at Microsoft certifications and diversity. So I would encourage you to register for that as well. Speaking of virtual groups, there's lots of them. So we have different languages and interest groups. You might want to check them out sometime and see if you want to subscribe to some more groups. Also throughout the year, we have SQL Saturdays. The top one there, Victoria, just happened right here. And so I'm still fresh off of SQL Saturday. You should keep an eye on one happening near you. And as always, connect with PASS. We've got hashtags and Twitter, and membership is always free. And so I'm going to start the process of switching over to Matt's uh, presentation. And thank you, Matt, for coming out. Uh, for the attendees, if you have questions, feel free to type them into the box. I will see them. Uh, we. I may pass them on to Matt at the very end of the session, depending on how things are going. Uh, so don't worry if you don't see an answer right away, we'll, or if you don't hear me ask him right away, we'll get to it. Thank you all for attending. And switching over. All right. Okay, it looks like everybody's in. Hey everybody, how are you? Uh, it's very nice to be here. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for having me here. Um, so today we're going to talk about networking 102. It's really just what do you do to get ready for an event? What do you do to get ready for various different events, whether they're local, they're network, you know, they're global, they're this, they're that. So a little bit about me. Uh, I work for Applegate Farms, I'm a business intelligence developer. I like bacon. Um, it's kind of a good thing here. Um, I'm also a part-time lecturer at Rutgers University, uh, so I do speak quite a bit. I have a database fundamentals class that I teach twice a week. Um, contact information, if you want to email me, my email is sqlkohai at gmail.com, and the whole premise behind SQL Kohai, SQL obvious for SQL Kohai, because I always feel like I am a student who can learn from somebody who has more experience in a specific area, whether it's professional development or technical or anything like that. Uh, my Twitter handle is at, at SQL Kohai. Uh, I have a blog at SQLKohai.com, and that's my LinkedIn profile. It's the only thing that's not, not SQL Kohai. Um, one of the things that I, I will say right up front here in the beginning before I get started, if you have anything that you enjoyed or anything that, that didn't make sense, a question, you know, uh, suggestion, anything, please feel free to email me or hit me up on Twitter. Um, I'm always looking to improve. I'm always looking to update things. What works, what doesn't work. Uh, timing was something hard to see. You know, do you think my slide deck sucks? You know, that kind of thing. Um, feedback is always welcome. Um, you know, constructive so that so that it can help me to improve my presentation so that I can help more people. So why are we here? 
we're going to discuss tools to use, tricks to remember, uh, what to do before an event, what to do during an event, and what to do after. And, and really, it's it's breaking up, breaking these things down into simple steps and things that that may not have occurred to you if it's your first event or if it's your thousandth thousandth event. It may not have occurred to you either. Pardon me, I'm going to be taking some water. Can I just interrupt for one quick second? Of course. Of course. Sorry, sorry, Matt. Um, at least one person is not getting sound. I was just hoping maybe some other folks could pop in to the questions and let me know if you can hear. Okay, other people have sound. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to confirm. Am I still okay? Yes. So I'm going to mute myself and get back to you. Okay, no problem. Um, so why are we here? It's really one of the things that I found is that breaking things down into smaller units and smaller things and things that may not have occurred to you that I found out I wanted to share. And so I put this thing together and, and whoops, I'm looking at myself now. And it's really just to understand what happens at an event and the things that you can use to help you to get ready for and to participate in and to follow up afterwards and the different channels of communication that I've found over the years that have really, really been helpful for me. Um, sorry, let me minimize this for a second. So the biggest takeaways from attending events, um, one of the things that I did in 2007 is I went to the first Microsoft BI conference and I, I think there was like one other, like a couple of years later and then they didn't have them. And then I really wanted to go and I was having trouble finding, you know, finding events to go to. And then I heard about pass. So it was like, I was very, very excited. So one of the things that, that I take away from a lot of these things, whether they're local, you know, the summit in, in Seattle or anything like that, it's always an opportunity to network. Yes, you are going to be taking classes. I get that. But I think that one of the things that people don't really understand is that they're so focused on going to the classes and learning as much as possible, which is what they're, what these things are for, that they miss the opportunity to really talk to and network with the people that are around them. One of the other things that I've also found is that when people are have a rigid schedule, they're always trying to get to all of the presentations. Now, if you get into a conversation with somebody, it never occurred to me that, you know what, I'm just going to skip this session because this is a great conversation I'm having with this particular person. They're telling me about something that I don't know or they're, they're re, you know, readjusting my brain pan about a specific way that I think about things. Don't lose the opportunity to finish a conversation by rushing to a class. If you've got a good conversation going on at an event, whether it's at lunch, whether it's before, whether it's just before a session, keep the conversation going. You know, either that or just say, hey, you know what, can we talk about this afterwards? I really have to attend this, uh, attend this session, but I really want to keep going with this. And the other thing is, is that you don't realize or, and, and this is, this is usually for a SQL Saturday event. So <laughs> this is a, you know, since this is a virtual group, it's a little bit different. You I, as a group, I think understand how good it is to have virtual groups like this and be able to talk to people all over the world and just ping, you know, ping an expert. Like I asked, I had a question about Power BI and I asked somebody who's on the Power BI team for Microsoft. It, it, 10 years ago, that would have been, you know, trying to get to that person would have been absolutely impossible. With events like this, you can really get to it. Pardon me if I'm sipping water a lot. I've been sick for the last week, so I'm really dehydrated and I don't want to start coughing into the microphone. So why did I put this session together? Um, like I said, one of the first things that I did was I went to the conference in 2007 and it was great. I learned a lot of things, but I didn't, there were things that I missed out on. Um, there were things that I, I didn't realize there were times that I, I could have done certain things. I could have talked to certain people. I didn't really know what was involved and what I could really get out of it other than just the education. So when past summit came around, I was in a much different situation. Um, I've been tweeting a lot on Twitter. I've been working with people back and forth, just answering questions, asking questions, using, you know, using Twitter almost as a development tool. And so I did some, some groundwork beforehand and I set up a couple of lunch, you know, conversations I had, you know, I met a couple of people for breakfast and it was really just utilizing these tools and being, being able to understand, okay, what do I need to do to find out about the event and, and taking it forward from there to the point where 
I was uh, I went to SQL Saturday DC in 2017, and when I was there, somebody said, "Why don't you, you know, why aren't you speaking? You're so passionate about this stuff. You love, you know, coming to these things. You love talking to these pe talking to people about this information. Why don't you put put something and put a session together?" So I was like, "Okay, that sounds, you know, pretty good. Why don't I do that?" So it all started in Summit. And for those of you who may, who may not know, um, we talked about it in the beginning about how PASS has all these things. Summit is, is a three or a five day, depending on whether you want to do the pre-conference sessions. It's a concentration of thousands of developers in one place in Seattle. And it's wonderful. And so what I did was I started talking to and, and figuring out, all right, who was going to, you know, who of my SQL, who the, of the people I followed on SQL who am I going to be able to see? Who's going to be there? You know, when am I going to be able to do things? That kind of thing. So if you look in the top left, that's that's Katrin. And so I was tweeting about something because I was supposed to be meeting somebody for lunch and I didn't realize it was the wrong day. And I said, hey, look for me. I've got, you know, the brown sweatshirt with the Applegate logo on it. Five seconds later, Katrin walks up. Matt? So we started talking. And I was like, oh, hold on. I was like, I want to try and get a selfie with all the people that I follow. So if you follow the progression, then another woman walked up and then two other guys. And I just started getting to the point where I started meeting a lot of these people in person. And it was just it was so wonderful to be able to make that connection, to be able to talk to these people on a regular basis and say, OK, hey, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Um, and it was just really for me, it was really nice to be able to put a name to a face and be able to, you know, actually listen to their voices so it's like it's funny because after this event i started reading their tweets in their voices so really i started taking a lot of these pictures and katrin said you know you should put together a session on networking and i said what are you talking about and she's just like well you've you've managed to track down and i tracked down about 30 people that i had been following I tracked down a lot of people took pictures with them had conversations with them and just really got a chance to get to know them on a personal level, on a, you know, on a physical level, so I could talk to them and, you know, be in person. And it was just, it was really, for me, it was, it was really wonderful. And it was an experience that I wanted to share with other people. So I wrote a couple of blogs on it and I posted all my pictures and just started thinking about, okay, you know what, maybe this is the, this is a good time. Maybe I can pay back into, into the pot and put together a session and maybe give some people the insight that I figured out as I went through. And afterwards, let's, try and give that to people ahead of time so that if they do go to Summit or they go, do go to SQL Saturday, they do go to a local group, they can utilize some of this information. So, <clears throat> pardon me, what kind of events can you look at? What kind of events can you go to? There are so many different events all over. What I'm going to concentrate on now is really the SQL events. So you have things that are on the national level. National usually means that you need to travel or you might need to stay over at least one night. The national events usually tend to be more than one day as well. They're pretty big, thousands of people, lots of really great insight. Usually not often very often, offered very often, usually about once a year. And some examples are the past summit, Microsoft Connect, um, TWI has a BI summit, there's MS, uh, MS Ignite. There's a lot of these things and you can really get a lot out of these events by doing some homework ahead of time. And we'll talk about that in a, in a couple minutes. But just for the national events, the, the larger, not, you know, not nearly as often kind of events. <clears throat> and then from, let's take a step down. You have your regional events. Regional are usually, you know, a little bit smaller. You usually can drive them. Some you can, some you can't, but the regional are, you know, they're often more off offered more often. Things like SQL Saturday, Girls Who Can Code. Um, we have uh, there's a, a local there's a there's a, an event in New York City that is uh, almost like a hackathon. But what they do is they take <clears throat> they pick one excuse me they pick one nonprofit company. <clears throat> pardon me. They pick a nonprofit company, and what they do is they put together a proposal for something that will be built and people come in and volunteer their time and we'll build a database and maybe some middleware and maybe, you know, a front end, things like that, build some security, teach some, you know, that kind of thing. Or, you know, we bring a bunch of kids together. Um, you know, I know girls who can code 
is an organization that is they pick from experts and they literally bring in people who are, you know, girls in this case, they bring in kids that are in middle school to high school. Um, college events, you know, have some of the same things. And then you've got local events where they're right here in your backyard. And I don't know that everybody takes advantage of this as much as possible. And, and there's not just the past events that you can do this with. There are so, there's meetup information, you know, there's meetup groups. There are so many things online that you can really just take advantage of, but you really, you know, reach out to, to talk to the people that are right around in, in your area, the local user groups, the SQL Saturdays that may be nearby. So for me, I live in central New Jersey, it's really beneficial for me to be able to look at the events that are right near here. Okay, which ones can I go to? So I think about it, it's like, okay, I can go to, I know there's in the next three to four months, there's Philadelphia, New York City. Uh, I don't know whether that one's actually uh, organized yet, but there's Philly, Albany, DC, New York City. Uh, I'm speaking next weekend uh, up in Boston. Boston's not, that's more of a regional event for me because it's not as far, it's it's not as close as everything else. So I do need to stay over for that one. Um, but it's, you know, there are so many things that are really right in your backyard that are that you don't take advantage of because maybe you don't know about or maybe they're not advertised or maybe they just not are, are advertised in the things that you're looking at. So it's, you know, really trying to find these things maybe a, a little bit difficult and sometimes, but really, you know, start to look for it. We have, uh, I used to teach at Rare valley community college here in new jersey and we had hackathons and we had all these events they wanted to do one that was database driven so they asked me to <clears throat> to start looking around and and i brought in a couple of friends of mine who are consultants and you know and we put together some stuff and it was really cool and it was a lot of the students that i was teaching but it was also a lot of the people in in the in different departments they were mostly in computer science but you know we had some communication majors who were interested in data they wanted to look at you know how are you going to analyze data how are you going to look at this information how are are you going to put all this stuff together? And then virtual groups, which, you know, I think you guys know about that. They know about that one. I don't know that everybody knows that virtual groups exist or to the extent that they exist. Like we talked about in the beginning, there's a lot, there's, there's a whole lot. And even it, it's nice for me to, to see, because I didn't even realize that there were that many. Um, there are things that I've wanted to do for a while. You know, there's things that I've wanted to prioritize for a while. And this is, you know, this is, a wonderful opportunity, a wonderful way for, you know, for me to stretch my boundaries into things that I may not know about, or just I have a little bit of an interest in and I'd like to know more about it, you know, attend a couple of meetings, things like that. So you've got, app, you know, application development, business analytics, women in technology, there's, you know, there's so many. And it, it's, it's neat because every time I go out and look, there's usually one or two more in there. Um, so it's neat to watch those grow. <clears throat> so one of the things that I like to talk about is, you know, what does each individual event have to offer? You know, what is what's on the plan? What are things that may not be out on that front page? So you go to register an event for an event. You go through the registration process. You put in your information. You pray that your company is going to cover most of it. Um, but there are things that I found out just by knowing people who had gone year after year after year. If this is your first summit or if this is your first SQL Saturday, you don't know a lot of this stuff, so you may not know to you know to ask these questions. So <clears throat> one of the things that I found at Past Summit was they have this first time or networking event. Now, if you understand the concept of speed dating, it's really pretty much the same thing. They broke us up into groups of like 20. Um, there are about, I'd say, a good 200, maybe 250 people in this one, uh, this one huge conference room in, in the uh, in the arena that we were in, and it was a great opportunity to meet people who you never would have met before. Um, you know, I was passing cards and getting cards, and it was great because it was, hey, is this your first? You know, what do you? you know, we really kind of they gave us a little bit of a. a a recipe to start with. Okay, start with your name, start with your job, start with your industry, start with your company, and then you know you've got another two minutes to ask a couple of questions, and then we're going to flip it. Then the other person will introduce themselves, and they'll do the same thing. So for me, it was really great to be able to not only meet a lot of people who I might not have met before, but also to see where everybody was from, what industries they were from, and it was really nice to be able to say, oh, hold on a second, you know, you're involved in the same industry as I am, you know. 
can we talk later or, or, you know, can we talk for a couple minutes afterwards? Or maybe, you know, can I meet you for coffee or meet you for, uh, for breakfast tomorrow? So the first time our networking event is, you know, is a wonderful opportunity. The first time a buddy group was even cooler uh, for me personally, because it allowed me to be matched up with somebody who had been to Summit, you know, multiple times. Um, my buddy leader was a guy named Lance. Uh, um, so we talked over email, <clears throat> went back and forth, and we were just, you know, introducing ourselves ourselves, giving a little bit of a background, what we were hoping to get out of the event. Um, Lance was always, you know, available to give advice, you know, to give anything that we needed. And it was, it was, even if it was just, hey, I don't have anybody to eat breakfast with. Yeah, yeah, yeah come on, I'll, I'll introduce you to some people. Um, so that was a really, you know, that was a really great opportunity. One of the things that I'm going to try and do, I'm going to be going to Summit uh, this year in, in November. It's the first week in November. I'm going to volunteer to be a buddy um, because I got so much out of it and, and I found, you know, I got so much information from everybody. I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, that I'll be able to do that. Um, and even if you don't sing, the, the sequel karaoke is a wonderful opportunity. Something that you may or may not know of. Um, I know that a lot of the, a lot of the companies that sponsor the sequel karaoke nights, and there's, there's sequel karaoke all five nights of the summit um and it's it's wonderful some people are very talented some people really just aren't um but it's great because it's it's a it's a chance for you to be in a social atmosphere maybe talk technical maybe not talk technical maybe just you know have a couple drinks and just hang out and you know and have a good time the other thing <clears throat> if karaoke is not your thing they have a thing called sequel game night which you know i was a first time attendee and I just volunteered because I wanted to help. And it was a lot of fun. They had uh, a lot of um, new board games, a lot of old board games. Um, there was a, a uh, almost a rumble on Settlers of Catan. So that was, you know, that was an interesting experience. But, you know, and people have drinks there. And, and it was just, it was a good opportunity for people to just hang out, relax, and just hang, you know, be with, you know, be with other people. So Past Summit has a lot of stuff that, you can, but it, you can do, but you, in some cases you do have to dig a little bit for it. Like I got the information of the first timer and the, and the, the, the networking event and the buddy group. I did get that in an email, but the karaoke nights and the game nights I didn't know about until I dug a little bit. So uh, that's definitely worth mentioning. Um, the other thing that was really wonderful that I liked to pass summit was something called birds of a feather lunches. Um, and what it is, is they have in the, in, in the dining area, they have dedicated tables for specific um uh, specific interest interests so there was a reporting services table there was a power bi table there was a query store table there was also an lgbtq table there was a military veterans table there was um i know i think there was one sports team table i can't remember exactly who it was but they have a lot of these things so if you do have a specific interest or you have even if it's not something you know a lot about if it's something that you're interested in and you want to talk to people who know about it a lot of the tables are you know the one or two people that are there are absolute experts in there and that's you know that's the one of the greatest things that you know was almost like a mistake i, I sat down at the table and they're like oh are you interested in power bi i was like yeah why and they were like oh well this is the power bi birds of a feather lunch table i was like oh okay cool i'm in the right place then um but it was just it was a wonderful opportunity SQL Saturdays um, are one of my favorite things because they're free. I mean, you got to pay for lunch, but they're free, and it's a it's a wonderful opportunity for you to not only gain the knowledge in something that you may or may not know a lot about, but it also you know has things that you can utilize on a regular basis. You can utilize the fact that they have sponsors. They've got the vendors that are out front that are willing you know willing and able and wanting to talk to you about everything and anything that you want to talk about. Um, so it's, it's a wonderful way for you to say, you know, Hey, you know what, there's this project that I've been wanting to work on, you know, what you're talking about is right, right up our alley. You know, why don't we have a, you know, why don't we have a chat? Why don't we talk? We can sit down now, or maybe we can, you know, schedule a call for, you know, for another time. Um, the thing that I like about SQL Saturdays is that I always try to find somebody random, introduce myself and say, Hey, do you have anybody to eat lunch with? I've got a couple people, you know, and just try and find one or two people who may be, you know, looking a little lost or maybe just, you know, look like they're, you know, they came by themselves. I like to try and bring people in and just say, hey, you know, I don't know what your name is, but my name is Matt. Would you like to have some lunch? That kind of thing. Um, and that may be just, you know, part of my personality. I just, I like having people, I like helping people and, and bringing people 
discipline and kind of, you know, I was accepted and, and pulled into this, this big, you know, SQL family. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. And it was just, it was wonderful for me. And it's like, I want to share that. I want to, I want to do that for other people. <clears throat> um, and there's, you know, and it depends on the SQL Saturday, but some of them do have, you know, they do have after events. Um, I usually end up having to take off because, you know, like the, the only ones that I've been to so far are DC. I went to DC twice and, you know, I had to get home because it was Saturday and, you know, I had to do things. But a lot of them do have, uh, you know, everybody goes to a specific bar or things like that. Um, the local user groups, the meet and greet beforehand for the local user group is is wonderful. Um, and it, it's, you know, it's it's maybe not the best pizza. I don't know. Um, but it's a great uh, it's a great way for you to meet the organizers of that particular local user group. Um, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll have the meeting will start at 630 <clears throat> and they'll have, you know, at six o'clock come by, you know, have soda and you know, soda and pizza or whatever, you know, some of them have salads, you know, that kind of thing. But it's a it's a chance to network. It's a chance to meet people. And, and I think that that's one of the things that people are not taking enough advantage of is is the fact that you can network very, very easily at any three, you know, any of these events, whether it's virtual, whether it's local, you know, regional or, or national. Um, I'll tell you a quick story. I, I convinced a friend of mine that I was working with. I had moved on to another job um, and she was not very happy with the with the job that she was in um and i had started attending the local user group here in new jersey and it was on i can't it was something on azure and i was just interested you know because i wanted to see what was going on with azure i don't really personally have very much stake in it at this point we're looking to move towards it fairly soon but for me it was just informational i wanted to not only learn a little bit but i also wanted to be able to meet meet and greet some people and talk to people but i brought my friend with me and in the course of that in the course of that meet and greet, she met two people who worked at this other company. They were looking for a full time DVA. She had more than enough qualifications, so she ended up getting a job at a local user group. You know, and it's it's people don't really think about it as you know, hey, this is a perfect opportunity to. I've always wanted to work for a company you know called Blue Granite. Uh, I wanted to be a traveling consultant family obligations, I wasn't able to really do it, but it's, I still keep in touch with a lot of the people who work for Blue Granite because it's such a wonderful company and I get to talk to them at a lot of these events, whether, you know, maybe not necessarily local, but, you know, at the SQL Saturdays and the summits, I get to talk to people from consulting companies that, you know, that I've, I've admired or that I've worked with in the past, like Pragmatic Works or, you know, SQL One or things like that. So the local stuff is, is really nice too. And again, virtual groups, it allows you access to stuff that you may not be able to get to because it's, you don't have to worry about traveling, which is nice. Um, there's a larger area of expertise. And this is the nice thing, you know, it, one of the things that, that I didn't really know about virtual groups and, you know, this this opportunity to speak to you was really eye-opening for me because I learned more about what, uh, you know, what you can do and what, you, you know, what is available, you know, how many groups are available and what are, you know, what you can do with virtual groups. Sorry, I'm just doing a time check. Okay. So, <clears throat> Getting ready for the event. What do you do before the particular event? So you've registered, now what do you do? You've gotten your information, you know, what's next? So you really need to look at what do you wanna get out of the event? What is my main goal? And I think that this is something that, that people should really take a good, you know, a good idea. It takes some time and really, you know, look at what am I looking to get out of this event? You know, how much do you know about the event? You really need to take a look at it. You know, is there breakfast? You know, is there anywhere, you know, is, is, are they going to be able to feed me? Because I personally, I have celiac disease, so I have to eat gluten free. So are they able to, you know, are they able to give me a gluten-free lunch or, you know, do, are they going to have vegetarian, things like that? You know, how much do you know about what's happening before, during and after the event? We were talking about the after party. Some of them have them, some of them don't, that kind of thing. <clears throat> the other thing about it is it's like you've registered it. You registered for the event. Do you know anybody who's going? Talk to, you know, you talk to the people that you work with. Is anybody going to this event? No, 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 no I'm not going to go. But do you know somebody who maybe in your neighborhood, maybe in your town, maybe in, you know, in your company, in a different department that may be going, you know, or has been to the event? Has anybody been to the event? 
you need to ask about that. And then you need to look at the schedule of the event and see what's offered. This is, you know, really, really important. Um, one of the things that I noticed at a couple of the events that I had been to is that if it's, you know, if it's an all day event or it's several days, people look at the schedule and they have, you know, definite things that they're going to. I'm going to go and see, I'm going to go to this one at this time. I'm going to go to this one at that time. And, you know, and the nice thing about Summit is that, and I think SQL Saturdays, some of the SQL Saturdays may have this, is that you have, have an application where you can look at, you can register, and you can look at all the classes that are offered. But the thing that, that people don't understand that I didn't get until it happened is that you're not guaranteed a seat in the session that you're that you're going to. Am I going to be able to find a seat? Am I going to, is it going to be, you know, full? There were a couple of sessions that I had to skip at uh, at Summit because the room was packed. I mean, it, to the point where I couldn't even walk in and stand because even that was full. So do I have a backup? Do I have something? So you really need to look at the schedule, see what's offered, and you have a loose schedule coming into the event, but you need to make sure that you have a few alternatives. You know, it's really important to have the ability to not only have something in, in, in your back pocket, say, oh, you know what? I'm not going to be able to get into this Power BI session. All right, you know what? There was this Power uh, PowerShell session that I really want to go to. I'm going to go to that. Or even more so, if you go to a session and, and it turns out to not necessarily be what you were looking for, you paid a lot of money to come to a large event like Summit or, or you know, you, you went to SQL Saturday. You don't necessarily have to stay in that particular room. Me, it's like, oh, I don't want to be impolite, things like that. As a speaker, I will always say, if this is turning into something that, that is not helping you and there is something else that you want to attend, I am not going to be offended if you go to that other event, if you go to that other session. It's not, you know, speakers understand that. It's, you know, our abstracts are very, very definitive, but they don't always tell the whole story. So if it's turning into something that, oh, you know what, I already know all about this. I can spend my time more wisely going to this other session or talk, or there was this person who was outside, you know, let me go see if they're still there and I can, you know, I can talk to them about that. So really have, you know, have a loose schedule, have a couple of alternative spots. Really important thing that, that didn't occur to me until I went to DC is make sure you check the schedule when you get there. Because even, you know, even the night before, the published schedule may not be what's going to happen the next morning because maybe a speaker had problems at the airport, you know, and they can't get there. Or maybe somebody had to bow out because they were sick. And so they put in a substitute uh, substitute session for it. So it was this, there was this one session that I really wanted to go to and I was really excited to go to. And I walked in and my friend Jim was there. I was like, Jim, what are you doing here? And I was like, this is supposed to be for this other session. He's like, yeah. He's like, they never took off out of Atlanta. They're not going to be here like at all. So they asked me to step in and it's, you know, he, he does something that's completely different for me. So I was like, okay, now what do I do? And I had to, I had to spend some time really looking at the rest of the, what was, you know, what was scheduled and say, okay, what do I want to see? What, you know, what else can I see by having the alternatives and, and the loose schedule? I would have been able to say, oh, all right, I'll just go to this other one and, and be able to attend what I wanted to attend. <clears throat> one of the things that you should definitely do is share the fact that you're going to an event whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's on Slack, you know, I'm going to this particular event. And, and you know, a lot of the registrations, a lot of the registrations will have that on, on the on the page when you finish, after you've registered, hey, do you want to tweet about this? Do you want to put this on Facebook? Do you want to, you know, whatever. Do you want to share that fact? Share it. Put it out there. Your followers may say, hey, well, you know what? Matt's going to that event. Cool. I really wanted to meet him in, in person or, you know, he and I want to have a conversation or, you know what? I just want to have a cup of coffee with that guy. Or, you know, he was talking about this event. It just reminded me. And that's that's one of the other things is that you can remind people of the of the thing. So, you know, talk about it on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. Announce it in the Slack channel. It reminds people and lets people know. It reminds people of something that they may have forgotten about. So I remember uh, I went to, I registered for SQL Saturday DC in 2018 and I was going to be speaking. So I, you know, I blasted it on Twitter and, and LinkedIn and <clears throat> a friend of mine sent me a direct message. Oh my God, thank you so much for putting that in. You know, the registration closes, you know, closes in a couple of days. I'd meant to do it, but I completely forgot about it. Thank you so much. And it really, you know, it, it reminds people that it may, you know, that there is something there or it may show somebody that they don't, you know, something that they didn't even know about. 
oh, there's an event in DC. I didn't even realize that. What is, you know, or to the other extent, what is past? What is SQL Saturday? I've never heard of this stuff. And it, it, it really, you know, there is a marketing department that works for pass and they do all that stuff. But it's, it, you know, for me, I learn more about it from word of mouth, just talking to people, attendees, talking to speakers and things like that. If you want to meet a speaker, you know, I wanted to meet, you know, uh, I wanted to meet a couple of people. There are, you know, a couple of people who are, you know, I call them sequel liberties. They're, they're very well known. Um, of course, I'm doing this presentation. I'm blanking on most of them. Um, but Pinal Dave, you know, I wanted to meet him and, and I still haven't gotten a chance to, to meet him in person. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to email the guy and say, hey, I'd really like it if, you know, I'd really like to, you know, just shake your hand. You, your, your stuff has really been helpful. You want to meet a speaker, let them know ahead of time. You know, if anybody wants to meet me, I'll be in Boston. <laughs> I'll be in Boston next week. Um, but it's, you know, if you want to meet a speaker, it's not just about, you know, the physical, you know, the physical interaction, but it's like, I have a question for you and it would be much easier for me to have a conversation with you in person. Do you have five minutes before the event? Can I have lunch with you during the event or that kind of thing? You know, do you have some time where we could sit down and just chat? That kind of thing. It's really important. And it's, it's speakers are, are a lot they're a lot more approachable than I thought. You know, for me, it was like, ooh, ooh, I don't know if, you know, they're really busy and things like that. Reach out to them over email and just, you know, they can answer you when they can. Um, one of the things about the event, find out if, you know, if, if they're going to be, if you're going to be able to eat. I found out nice, you know, the, the great thing about um, going to Summit in D.C., everything was labeled as having gluten being gluten free or not gluten free um you know if you're a vegetarian things like that the dietary restrictions for me it was it was really important because for one of the local groups they were going to be bringing in you know the bringing in just pizza i was like all right i'll just make sure that i eat beforehand or you know if i know that i'm going down to a sequel saturday are they going to have breakfast you know if they are what is it going to be or is you know you can talk to the organizers and say hey you know is there some place for me to, to get something to eat before you know what's open before that kind of thing <clears throat> and the most important thing and ray kim who i think is on this has one of the coolest business cards that i've ever seen get business cards get them it's so important it really is and i'll go into that in a little bit but it's so important to have business cards when you go to these events because you want to make sure that you can talk to people you can give them your business card and we'll go over some of the things that you really want to do but it's like you you want to be able to have somebody have a way to contact you afterwards so get you know get some business cards they don't have to be a million dollars doesn't have to be really expensive but having a having a card with your contact information and maybe your position or your interests is really important because it's like, who is this guy? Oh yeah, it's this person. I remember him. Yeah, let me let me reach out to this particular person. So definitely get business cards. It's it's I I have a I, I have a, a little box that I have at home and I, I always put all my business cards in, but it's like before I put them into the box, I always kind of take some notes. It's like who's this? Oh yeah, this was this person. All right, I want to reach out to this person. Yeah, this person is, you know, I talk to them about that, that kind of thing. So <clears throat> that's before the event. During the event, what you want to do is obviously attend sessions to talk to people, obviously not during the session, but talk to people. The event is about presenting sessions, but it's really more in my head, in my, in my point of view, it's more about presenting information. Here's the information and, and here's what you can do with it. But it, it's, it also allows you the opportunity to talk to people about, something that you just learned something that you know is is either flies in the face of everything that you understood before you know and you can talk about this stuff and and you know and really just engage in discussion you know and be able to talk about this and and a plug for ray kim he has a networking 101 session that is really focused on how to talk to people it's i, I it was my original intent to kind of have this global you know here's how to do it and here's how to talk to people Ray's session covers all that. So, and, and, and from what I understand, that was, you know, the last presentation. So it's, it's a wonderful session. It really is. And it really, it really, I recommend it highly. Pass along those business cards. When you talk to somebody, when you meet somebody, even when you're just shaking a speaker's hand, just say, Hey, it's really nice to meet you. And just give them your card, give her your card, you know, just pass along those cards because they, they really do present you to the person. 
you know, and it's really, it allows you to, to start a conversation or to have a conversation afterwards and be able to, you know, to do things like that. One of the things that I would definitely recommend when you get somebody's card is write down some information on the card because you're going to reference it later. So <clears throat> things like where did you meet, you know, SQL Saturday, DC, vir a virtual group, that kind of thing. What were you talking about? Maybe subject matter, subject material. Um, like you know, I, I had this big card and along the card it said, you know, talk to this person about eliminating all merge statements, which, you know, one that's one of the things that we really picked up was why are we using this and what, you know, what's better. <clears throat> Write down details that you might forget later. They work for Microsoft. They have a, a similar problem with SSRS. You know, they work in the same industry, you know, that kind of thing. Possible opportunities. You know, you have you're talking to somebody who works for a consulting company or you're a consultant and you're talking to somebody from another company, possible opportunities that you can talk to, you know, talk to them about afterwards, you know, whether or not they're looking for a DBA, DB, you know, DBA or a development person, things like that. You know, is it a multi-day conference? Write down which day that you talk to them. Cause that's strangely enough, that's, it's important. And <clears throat> after you're done talking to them, if you have any questions that you want to follow up with, write that on the card. And yeah, it starts to get a little bit small, but you use shorthand and, and you can do it. So while you're there, take advantage of the fact that vendors are there because the vendors are there so that they can share their services. You know, they're there to set up connections, to talk about opportunities and things like that. And they're also there for swag because they've got some, you know, some vendors have some really cool swag. Like when I went to the 2017 summit event, everything was the fidget spinners. And so I have like six or seven of them on my desk and it drives my boss insane. <clears throat> but they do, they have expertise in things that you may not have, or they have specialized expertise or they have broader expertise. They have things that you can talk to them about. Just talk to them. Even if it just triggers an idea in your head of how to handle something, it's a successful conversation. Talk to them. It gives you an opportunity to interact with people who have more information about a particular subject matter that you may not, you know, that you may not have as much experience in. And they may be closer to some technology. Some of the people that you'll talk to, you know, some of the consulting companies or some of the hardware companies, they have direct, you know, contact or they're, they're, they get the first iteration of every single, you know, every single release. They may be able to help you with something. Hey, I've been trying to solve this particular problem for the last two years. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go to 2016. You know, this will this will handle all that, or you know, or wait for this, or you know, that kind of thing. It's definitely worth talking to them about. And plus, you know, every vendor that I have met in all any event that I've gone to, really personable, really wonderful people. During the event, <clears throat> one of the things that is not taken advantage of, because most people tend to sit with people that they know, is lunch. You know, you have the special interest of the birds of a feather table at Summit. Definitely take advantage of that. But even if you're at you know a local SQL Saturday or it's the you know it's the 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 meet and greet beforehand, take the opportunity to talk to people. You know, it's a good chance to meet other people. It's a good chance to meet other people in your industry. It's a good people a chance to meet people that have the same job, maybe in a different industry, and they have a different way of thinking about it. They have different experiences, they have different approaches. It's it's really just you know, let's let's kind of hit the ball against the wall and let's see what happens. You know, that kind of thing. I, I've come up with, you know, some really wonderful solutions just based on conversations with people that I've had, you know, that, that I've had at, at events like this. <clears throat> Remember that, you know, all speakers, we all started as attendees. This is my second speaking engagement. Boston will be my third. I like speaking and, and, you know, I like talking to people. I like talking to people about this stuff because my wife doesn't really like talking to me about this stuff. So when I go to events, I'm really eager to talk about anything that has to do with SQL Server or with anything, you know, that pertains to SQL Server. I love talking about this stuff. So it's like speakers are no different. We like to talk about this stuff. That's why we come up with these sessions. Ask us questions. You know, I have found that some of the things that I have learned most deeply, deeper, deepest, um, have been questions from somebody is like, wow, I've never thought of that. I've never thought about it that way, or I've never thought of that particular thing, or you're asking me about something I have never even heard of. Let me find out more information. So it's, you know, it's, it, it's good for us because it helps us to really, you know, broaden our knowledge base as well. Grab a card. You know, if you can't stay to talk, grab a card and just email us later. Hey, I had a question about your session. 
you know, in this particular instance, how would you handle this? How would you handle that? You know, we talked about the info, you know, we talked about this particular thing in our conversation, give them an idea of what you talked about or, or maybe, you know, something in their, their, uh, their session that you had a question about. One of the things that it'll help is that'll give you the information, but that'll also tell the speaker, okay, I've had several people ask me particular questions about this particular section. Maybe I need to rework that section. Maybe I need to, you know, look at this and and streamline it a little bit, or make, you know, or, or maybe give a couple of slides on this instead of just one with some bullet points. Go into more detail, make it better for the next one. The other thing that you can do during the event <clears throat> is to fill out the feedback surveys. Um, I never really put a lot of stock in these because I never, you know, I never, it never really occurred to me what they were for, but definitely fill them out. It's the only way that that we can improve. It gives us different points of view from the audience. You know, somebody is a first time attendee, somebody is a thousandth time attendee. The perspective that you're bringing to the the bringing to the survey will help not only the speaker, but it help it also helps the organizers. You know, if they are getting a lot of, you know, a lot of feedback about this particular speaker, whether it's good or bad, it, it'll make them it'll it'll make them stand up and take note. OK, is this somebody that we maybe need to schedule for a precon or is this somebody who you know we need to talk to? Maybe they need to be more detailed or, you know, maybe they were all over the place and we need to have you know, we need to talk to them about that. It's the only way that these events and these you know presentations can improve is by getting the fee, you know, getting and filling out the feedback surveys. And one of the things that that is important is that when you do when you do give feedback, give it constructively. Um, I had a couple of you know I've had a couple of feedback cards like when I'm when I'm teaching I get uh, I get stuff from my students as far as you know they they not only fill out all the cards but they also you know are able to look at and give you know give their own information. So it's like a couple of them are like, well this class stinks or he's great. Or he's wonderful, but it's like why? You know, give detail, give content. So after the event, <laughs> check to see if there's an after party and go. You know, write down all your notes and your thoughts. Write down what you were thinking. You know, look at the cards. You know, go through the cards and write down stuff. Most of the events that I've been to, they give you a notebook and a pen. Use it. You know, and then that becomes that for that particular event, you've got all your information that you learned in that particular event. So if you want to remember it or you want to go back to it, you know where it is. It's in there. But write down the notes before you leave. I would definitely suggest that you do it before you leave because it'll allow you to, if you've got things that you're thinking of, you can write all that down. So when you read it again, it's like, oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Rather than, you know, me, I my short term memory is kind of stinky. So I tend to try and write as much as possible right afterwards. Brag about the swag. You know, go out on on Twitter, go out on all these places and, and, you know, vendors love seeing, you know, love seeing pictures of their swag on your desk. You know, I have, you know, the idea of ducks are um, are a little crazy. I've got like seven or eight of them on my uh, on my desk. So they love seeing that stuff. <clears throat> Share what you've learned, you know, both externally and internally. Um, so you can write blog posts so that everybody can see it. I write not only on my my SQL Kohai blog, but I also write stuff for um, for Inside Applegate <clears throat> so that people can see what I've done and maybe they can get you know some knowledge. Yeah, it may be all IT, but what I try to do is I try to write some stuff that isn't necessarily all IT, so other parts of the company can you know can benefit from it. Reach out to people that you've connected with <laughs> before you lose your business card because there was this one guy I really wanted to talk to and I lost his business card and I couldn't remember his name. So reach out to them as soon as as soon as you can. And think about how you can help. You know, for me, I went to I went to SQL Saturday DC and it was like, I, I need to speak. I really I want to start speaking. And so, you know, how can you help? You can speak, you can volunteer, you can, you know, you can start a local user group. If there isn't one, you know, there's so many different ways that you can do it. And I would I would definitely recommend that you speak. It's a little nerve wracking. It's definitely, you know, I was nervous before this, but if you if you're passionate about something and you really want to share the information that you have, it's a great way to not only share that information that you've come up with, but also get feedback so that you can learn even more. So I would definitely recommend that. <clears throat> so networking, it's all about making connections, sharing knowledge, you know, paying it forward. 
competition. Somebody said this to me once, and I really, I, I always include this. Competition is good. Cooperation is better. And this is, I got this from a guy who was working for my direct competitor. Um, we were sitting down at lunch and we were just talking about stuff. And he and I had known one another before, you know, from a previous job, like two or three years before. And I said to him, I said, you know, is this going to be okay with your company? And he's just like, you know what? He's like, competition's good. He's like, cooperation is better. He's like, because you and I will both benefit from this conversation. You learn how to learn from other people. And and for some people, it's easy. Some people, it's not necessarily easy. So it's the more you do it, the better off you're, you're going to get. So one of the things that I'm, I'm We've got about 10 more minutes, so I just want to I want to go through these. I want to make sure I you know, get some time if there's any questions. The weight that I have found over the last, I think I joined Twitter in 2011, is really to to look at how you can communicate and what you can use to communicate. So I use Twitter, <clears throat> and one of the things that I've used it for, and I started using it for, is if you include you know hashtag SQL help in your in your question people have things set up so that they will search for specific hashtags, SQL help, SSIS help, SSRS help. I have found so many experts that are just like, oh yeah, just do this. And it would have taken me 15, 20 minutes sometimes. You know, in some cases it's, you know, several hours of sifting through all of the blog posts and all of the technical documents to find the one answer. It's like, yeah, just flip this and, and you're done. Um, so Twitter has been, you know, immeasurably help. It's also really good. You know, I found some people who are, you know, very like-minded. I like scuba diving. So I found a couple of people, you know, who like to go scuba diving. And so we're trying to plan a trip when I'm not sure, but we're trying to plan a trip and I'm going to, um, hopefully speaking in, in Virginia, I want to try and, you know, organize it for down there so that we could go while I'm down there. So you find answers and you find, in some cases, you find friends. I found some really cool people who I, you know, I met on Twitter, you know, a long time ago. Perfect example. I've been following this guy for probably the last eight years. And I was going through something here at work and I'm looking at the store procedure and up at the top of the store procedure, it says his last name and it's a very distinctive last name. And so I, I sent him a direct message and said, hey, by the way, did you ever work for Applegate? And so we had a conversation about that and he had, he had worked there like, you know, eight or nine years before. Um, SQL family is something that, that is really, it's a community of people on Twitter who are really invested in helping people out. Um, I had a really horrible job at one point and I had a couple people helping me out with some, you know, some tutorials and, you know, Hey, if you wanted to handle this problem, how would you handle it? And really help me work back from a manager position back to a development position so that I could get back into development. And there was, it was really, it's, it's, it's a wonderful group of people and it's not something that you join it's just it's part of the community that's on twitter and, and they're really wonderful people and everybody is willing and able to you know are, are very wonderful and wanting to help so i mean chris yates it says you know morning anyone can give up it's the easiest thing in the world to do but to hold it together when everyone else you understand would uh, if you fell apart that's true strength it, you know, stuff like this chris is really wonderful about posting stuff like this i was saying that i was really nervous about you know presenting at SQL DC and, and, you know, and this guy posted back, you got this. I can't believe this is your first speaking engagement. Congratulations. It's just, it's a wonderful supportive, you know, community. And I just, I'm, I'm very happy and glad that it's, you know, that it's in my life. Um, I use TweetDeck. Um, I'm running out of time, so I won't go through this, but there's just, there's different panes that you can use. What's trending. I'm you know, I search for SQL family. I've got my specific messages. Here are things that, that have my name or have retweeted me, and these are this is my regular thing. TweetDeck is really easy to use. Um, I would definitely suggest using it if you if you do get on Twitter, and I would definitely suggest using Twitter. Um, Slack is something that I just started doing. Twitter expanded, um, so it's you know it, it is a lot more. Um, there are you know there's a lot more to do, but you know the Still, Slack is great because it has it has more questions, it has more character limits, so you can you can really utilize that, which is nice. Um, everything, each community has channels within it. Channels are very very specific, so there's like there's a SQL community with a PowerShell channel and a Power BI channel and this channel and that channel and that kind of thing. And it's a great place to, you know, you practice, you know, you put together something and you and you put it into a particular channel and say, hey, you know, does this make sense? Can you go out and, you know, and look at this and, and tell me, you know, tell me what you think. Post some code, post a, a link, you know, what that kind of thing. You've got discussions on new stuff, what's coming out, what's, you know, what's coming down the pipe, what stinks, what doesn't, you know, and you get, 
you glean that knowledge. And a lot of the people that are in there are very, very smart and they're very, they're wanting and willing and able to, you know, to put that information out there. There's file sharing. And as I said, I'm just getting, I'm just getting started. Up. It's broken up into channels on the left. This is kind of what it looks like. So you've got your channels, you know, you've got your community, you've got direct messages and things like that. You can look, you know, all the different channels, SQL Saturday. This is the SQL Server community that I, that I joined a while, a while back. Blogging is really important, you know, and this is one of the things that, that I found. Um, if I didn't, if I wasn't sure about something, I went and did more research on it. So I started writing blog posts about stuff that I didn't even know about and just like started, all right, getting started with SSAS. What do I know? What don't I know? And I just started blogging about that stuff and I got a lot of really great feedback. So like I said, write a getting started series. LinkedIn is great. You can, you know, if you're blogging, you can just, you know, connect it directly to LinkedIn. And so like I have Word, I have a WordPress um, installation. So it just, it posts automatically there on Twitter and on LinkedIn. It doesn't do it on Facebook. It used to, but it doesn't do it anymore. Um, it's led to several op new opportunities for people and it helps, you know, it helps show your expertise and it, it shares your information, you know, so it's, it's good. And it has groups and communities as well. So not bad. I got four minutes. So that's good. <clears throat> so what did we learn? We talked about what to do before. Really prepare. Really look for information. Look and see what's see what's available. See what's provided. Things like that. What do you do during? Talk to people. Pass out your cards. Get into conversations. Go to sessions, obviously, but really try to look at the human aspect of of the event and really try to enrich that experience for yourself by reaching out and talking to people, inviting somebody to lunch. You see somebody who may be sitting by themselves, go and sit with them. You know, and and make them feel comfortable i hated being you know sitting at a table by myself and it was like i was praying nobody would come and sit with me and at the same time i was praying that somebody would come and sit with me so you know really look at you know the human aspect of the whole thing and then what to do after follow up look at your cards take your notes you know put your stuff you know put the stuff in that notebook so that you can remember it or refer to it later that kind of thing you know and, and we talked about the different channels of communication i would definitely you know i'm not looking to you know boost my number of followers, but it's like there, I can give you advice on all the people, you know, that I follow, you know, who's really good at this, who's really good at that, who's, you know, and then you kind of navigate it yourself as well. So there's Twitter, Slack, you know, and so now what? Well, I can't really give you one of my cards because this is <laughs> a virtual presentation, but follow me on, follow me on Twitter. Um, shoot me an email if you want to go to, if you want to be invited to the, uh, the Slack channels. Um, and start your own blog. I mean, there's nothing stopping you from from start from starting something. You know, just if you're interested in something, just write about it. See what happens. Search for help tags on 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 Twitter and start trying to help. Start trying to answer those questions. That was really what got me into Power BI is that I started seeing all these questions. I was like, you know what? I have some of these questions. Let me see if I can answer some of them. And then all of a sudden, I started answering them, and it was it was it was wonderful. It was really helpful. Go to pass.org. And just check out, they have so many things there that you can do that are, you know, that are just, it, it, it's, it, I didn't even realize that half the stuff that's there. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. So thank you. Um, I appreciate you uh, attending this session um, and listening to me talk about the things that are important to me. Uh, my email, my Twitter, my blog, my LinkedIn communication, it's all here. Uh, I'm going to be giving um, the slides to the organizer. And that's about it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Are there any questions? I think. Um, I do have a question for you from Joseph. Joseph is going to his first pass summit this year. Welcome, Joseph. Um, and mm -hmm. he's wondering on where we might find information on the Buddy program. Um, I don't know, but because I looked for it as well, I believe as it gets closer to the event, that's when they start. Po that's when they start putting up links to a lot of that stuff. Um, if you've already registered, you should be getting regular emails. Check in those regular emails that you're getting from Pass Summit. I don't work for I don't work for Pass, but this is I believe the the way that I uh, I found out about a lot of all this stuff is that about two months beforehand, they start sending out regular communication of hey, you know, you might want to take advantage of this or you might want to take advantage of that that kind of thing. But if I do yeah, find it, I will definitely I will post it or, or tweet about it. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. And um, Ray says he'll see you in Boston next weekend. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Um, any other questions from anybody? OK, 
getting some thanks coming in. So I think we're probably done. We're also at the top of the hour. So we can probably say goodbye. Good. Thanks so much for uh, presenting for us today, Matt. Um, oh, it was wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, goodbye.